Okay, welcome back everyone. It's uh, 4.21 of 2015. We're going to look at uh, lesson 9 and the final lesson in Jensen's Ecclesiology. He wants to close out with the doctrine of justification. And he wants to look at it uh, through patrology, Christology, and pneumatology. And he'll use uh, Paul, Luther, and uh, Augustine. But if we take a look at the first moment of patrology, the Father uh, mandates and defines righteousness, and uh, the, through the Father's freedom, um, he posits a specific loving community as the Koinonia Fellowship. And uh, this particular moment emphasizes the predestination aspect of righteousness, that uh, predestination that takes place within that uh, usia essence of the Father, the trimutual space. And we understand predestination within Jensen as uh, basically the uh, teleology of Soteria that uh, existed in the uh, usia trimutual essence. And so within that uh, teleology of Soteria, you have the uh, eschatological goal of righteousness. He says that, uh, so this stage is the stage of predestination. Um, there is a, a paradigm of personhood that he wants to um, present here. The self has uh, its fulfillment in the vision of God. So the baptized individual is the paradigm of a paradigm of a personhood, and humanity as a concept is abstracted out of a God's community as the Quinonia Fellowship. Therefore, the self uh, establishes itself as a in justified goodness as to how it belongs to the totus Christos of the soma and the kephale, the body and the head of alignment of the Quinonia Fellowship. Remember the, uh, the the soma kononia and the kephale alignment together make up the Todas Christos of uh, the church. And this church does embody the attributes of faith, freedom, and love. So the actualization of righteousness is simply uh, for the self to take its place in the Koinonia Fellowship as a uh, contributing uh, place of service. Now baptism initiates one into this uh, Koinonia community. And uh, it's an uh, inclusive teleology of uh, Soteria, which is a teleology of righteousness, through a methodology of speaking the gospel. It's uh, through the word event of speech act. And uh, Paul, according to Jensen, Paul stated that the Father speaks righteousness as an apocalyptic unveiling, so um, this unveiling is appropriated by faith, by the believer. So justification is the word event of apocalyptic unveiling and uh, peace to o faith on the part of the, of the uh, initiate. So the first moment is the predestination moment of realizing that there is a teleology of soteria which has as its eschatological goal the righteousness of uh, God's history that uh, pre-existed in the trimutual usia essence of the Father. The second moment is uh, the Christology of uh, justification. He uses Luther here. Um, it constitutes the event of righteousness. It's acquired uh, as the risen Christ's word as spoken. The Christ his Son unites with us as that kephale, head of alignment, of the soma koinonia body of Christ, the fellowship the Soma body is united with the Kephale alignment of Christ. And proclamation simply equals the audibility of the risen logos. A doctrine of proclamation emerges here because we are justified by faith and the gospel is structured to uh, present an interrogation for that response of faith. But the promise of fulfillment in the gospel itself breaks the self's 
in curvature toward egoism, so that it is a spirit that frees us, but the church will still speak the law, even though it is uh, prioritized in speaking the gospel, it still does speak the law, but uh, the statement of the gospel is essentially Jesus is risen and not that we are saved by faith. It's on the the grace side of a the Father and the Son that, that is emphasized in the Gospel. So this event of righteousness and proclamation of righteousness combine for a justification in Christ alone. The ultimate trust for salvation is the God of the risen Christ alone that excludes any ultimate reliance on not just works, but we can't uh, have any ultimate reliance on even faith because it's the grace of the Christ Son as speech act and word event that constitutes righteousness, not our faith. So we can't even prioritize faith. Righteousness is through God's justified action in the Son and in the Spirit. Uh, in this moment, the soul becomes what it hearkens to. So uh, by hearkening to the Christ event, we do acquire righteousness for the uh, suke soul of the self. When we know Christ, we become what we know. Knowing is acquired through hearing in this moment. So it's a logos as a speech act. And this creates our ontological righteousness. Now Jensen says that this this moment does also depict a uh, mode of deification. For Luther, the believer slips away uh, from uh, correspondence to Christ from time to time. There's a need for return, and uh, therefore he has a doctrine of the increase in righteousness as the ever new hearing of the promise of the gospel, uh, which initiates a type of a re-entry into the baptism of the Spirit. It's like a, a rededication and a reaffirmation of faith to restore one to the corresponding um, fellowship with Christ. There's a, a need for this type of a penance or renewal, and that's why the uh, doctrine of an increase in righteousness was posited by Luther. Now, the schema of personhood here in the second moment, uh, we learn that the Father decrees the existence of the person, but each person carries a perspective of being. Some are enclosed within that uh, concept of predestination. So some are predestined to a perspective of faith. God becomes a transcendental focus of that perspective. And its target, of course, is the Christ identity. And the identity is pre presented to the self as a communal phenomena of the church, of the uh, koinonia, of the body of Christ. So Christ confronts us as the liveliness of the communal agency of the Koinonia Fellowship. But ultimately, righteousness must rest with the Father's determination and the Father's action in Christ, and not in a, the Church's limited presentation or our apprehension of faith. All of that is secondary to the uh, activity of grace on the side of God and the Son, the Father and the Son. The third moment is uh, Augustine's pneumatology, and uh, basically uh, it constitutes the achieving of righteousness. So we've gone from the predestination of righteousness to the event of righteousness to the uh, realm of spirit where we achieve righteousness. Uh, and it's through the uh, speaking of the justified word that liberates us from the bondage to egoism. It persuades us toward justice, and it constitutes righteousness as eschatological liberation, a process of eschatological liberation, where we are gathered up into the movement of God's own righteousness and history. The uh, Spirit raises us up. Uh, the concept used in the New Testament is egyro. We are, uh, that's the same word for resurrection. The Spirit gathers us up and raises us up into the uh, divine history where our history becomes inclusive within the divine history, which is the teleology of soteria salvation and righteousness. So this is the communion of the seeing and the hearing of God's word. The Soma Koinonia anticipates the kingdom and sacrament for Jensen. 
that brings us to uh, the underived event of God's communal faithfulness because it is God the Father's faithfulness that secures our righteousness. It is continually actualized in the reality of the incarnate Son. God's history is made to be our history also. And it's through the hearing and the seeing of the word that uh, we progress in our righteousness. The Koinonia Fellowship anticipates the kingdom in sacrament. So it's through the presentation of sacrament and our participation in seeing and hearing the word that we increase in righteousness. There is an ongoing epistemology that sustains us. Christ as our object is the form of our knowing. And it's through the methodology of seeing God's usia essence. The communion of seeing consists of uh, where we become epistemologically attached to the divine essence beyond the concrete sign of any sacrament of the church. So it, uh, it's that uh, activity that takes place between the dialogue of the racis presentation and the semion sign. So that we discussed in previous lessons, we have the presentation and the sign of the sacrament given by the church, and that creates kind of an epistemological deification epiphany for those who are uh, grasped by it and who grasp it in faith. A visible manifestation of the hidden divinity takes place through this uh, dialectic of sacramental deed being apprehended in faith. So our share in God's history is the basis of our epistemology. And it proceeds uh, through the um, initiating begin beginning in baptism and through that uh, increase in righteousness that Luther talked about where we do um, have the recurrence of this uh, baptism in spirit as we continue to participate, to participate in the word event. Now, revelation uh, simply means it's the uh, dialogue that God sustains continually with us in the realm of spirit. And uh, therefore, our knowing is always a ongoing occupation and ongo ongoing activity through the agency of the church and our participation in that communal fellowship. And that brings us to uh, that uh, concept of kephalia again, where Christ is the head of the koinonia fellowship. The head of the body is the kephalia of Christ and his self-consciousness. God is triune and intrinsically talkative, a triune reality that speaks promises. The risen, risen Christ is both God to us and our object of our knowing. But it's only Christ's self-understanding that can become our kephalia, of the Soma Kononia Fellowship. Christ as the Kafali head of alignment can only be the head of alignment as we appropriate to his self-understanding as revealed in Scripture. We can never completely know this word event. But we do acquire it uh, progressively. And the final sustaining activity of the Kononia Fellowship is a catecheo. And catecheo is a Instruction in the way of the Lord, or you may have heard of the term catechism, but it's instruction in the way of the Lord, catecheo. The first century church was comprised of unbelievers, and then the catechumen, individuals who were being instructed on their way to the new faith. They actually had kind of a, a prefatory theology to teach the identity of this uh, particular type of faith and this particular type of divinity that Christianity was positing. So there actually was a kind of a prefatory theology in training individuals concerning the difference of Christianity and what it had to offer. It uh, was completely different than the, the cults that were already in existence. Certainly differed uh, dramatically with the pagan cults, but uh, that difference kind of prompted a uh, catecheo that was a prefatory type theology. So it uh, gives us a pretty in-depth look. For his final lesson, he gave us uh, quite a bit of content. But he wanted to wrap up his uh, ecclesiology with a discussion of uh, the doctrine of justification. Pretty much taking up 
the trilogy as the moment of the predestination of righteousness as being enclosed within the teleology of soteria salvation which was uh, pre-existent in the usia essence of the trimutual space within the father and then as the father went out of himself to create and to posit the teleology of soteria that was uh, the Christological moment of justification, the event, the word event of the rhema voice of Christ that speaks to us and secures uh, our righteousness as the event of righteousness, asking for our participation and our faith response. And then this leads us to the realm of spirit and the pneumatology. And in the pneumatology, we get involved in uh, realizing that it's truly um, the divine faithfulness that secures our righteousness and it's uh, fundamentally priorities given to grace and not our faith. But we do continue in uh, appropriating the kafale head of alignment for the body. And we do continue uh, in practicing a catecheo, um, catech catechism or instruction within the koinonia fellowship. And that helps us to be sustained in our uh, eschatological liberation toward righteousness. So it's a great little closing lesson on justification. He really did a, a great job of uh, kind of encapsulating uh, three moments that he wanted to include. He wanted to include Paul and Luther and Augustine. And so his, his position kind of encapsulates uh, all three individuals. And he lets them complement each other within this uh, eschatological, liberating teleology of justification and righteousness. And that'll wrap up our final lesson of ecclesiology for Jensen uh, from 1999.